going to say right off the top of the bat, Landon preached my message. And seriously, so just wait, uh, my, my message. <clears throat> I think the Lord, the Lord is so, so very cool. And uh, he's faithful. He's faithful to meet us when we come and assemble together. You're blessed tonight. Did you know that? You're blessed. The Bible tells us that the one who does his word, not just hears it, but does it, is blessed in his doing. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is. So much more as you see the day approaching. You're blessed. Amen. You're blessed uh, for, for obeying and, uh, and doing the word. Hey, I want to say something just uh, very quickly. Thanks, Rod. If, if I cut it in time for us to pray tonight, do you care to come back? Uh, thanks. You'll be here? You won't be here? You'll be here. <laughs> okay. Um, so just about voting. Hey, I want to say, say this right here. Uh, it's not, listen, it's not just about our civic duty. We have a responsibility to God as his children and as the church. Uh, and let me tell you, there's no such thing as a separation of church and state. If there was no church, if there was no God, if there was no Bible, there would be no government. And so the church needs to rise up and take the responsibility. And I think it's a weighty thing. I think it's a, a weighty thing and a, um, a um, fearful in the sense of we come, uh, that there should be a fear of the Lord in us uh, to not take it lightly and to do what what am I doing? Okay. Ooh, thank you. Zipper's good, though? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, our responsibility. Amen. And, you know, uh, you may say, well, I don't like either candidate, and uh, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. We are called to look at the platforms that each party represents. And we are to make the call the best we can, the, the platform that, that the party stands on and executes uh, th their beliefs, the ones that most line up with, uh, with the Bible and with godly principles. And that's it. And that's it. And, uh, you know, we, we need to be supportive uh, of a party platform that believes in life. And not the murder of innocent babies in the womb. Amen. Amen. So we take personality out of it. And we are the, we're the salt and the light in the earth. Is that right? We are here to push back the darkness and to resist evil. Murder is evil. Murder is evil. And, and so we need to have our voice out there. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Landon mentioned uh, this series, this Back to Faith School. And if I calculated it right, we have eight weeks of it. And uh, I have just, I've been looking at it. I've been looking at, uh, at our notes. And this just came up in me today, so I'm going to say this to you. I believe if we will take these messages, these eight weeks... Of messages and if we will give ourselves to them and what do I mean by that I mean listening to them meditating on them over and over sitting before the Lord taking notes uh, and if we will do this until the end of the year I believe our lives will look radically different amen amen I, you know I go back to what uh, brother Joe uh, Morris says quite frequently he says that he listens to a brother Hagen. Y'all know who I'm talking about, brother Kenneth Hagen, who uh, was his spiritual father. And he he says he listens to sermons uh, usually several a day, and most of the ones that he's heard, he can excuse me, bubbly water makes me burp. Uh, he can preach them word for word, and yet he continues to feed on the word of faith because it strengthens him. Amen. And so, 
uh, we're getting life-changing messages, the Word of God being preached here. And we don't want to consider it as a one and done. As a one and done. If we'll listen and we'll meditate on it and we'll hold fast to it. If we'll get our notebooks out and we'll take notes and allow the Lord to breathe on it. We will be a transformed people. Amen. From the inside out. So I just encourage you to do that. And uh, you know we live in a, in a day and age where we have. How many of you know you can go on YouTube at any time and catch all of the messages? Is that right? Uh, long before there was a YouTube, long before there was streaming, uh, Brother Keith Moore, um, some of y'all are probably familiar with him, but they have at their church, Faith Life Church, what they've called Word Supply. And they've done this for many, 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 many years when you couldn't just hop on YouTube and, and listen to a message, you know? Uh, if you wanted to re-listen to it, then you bought a cassette tape. That's right, I said cassette tape. Uh, or a CD, or even DVDs. I mean, they, they produce those all free of charge to anyone that would call in or write or want any of the material. It was free of charge. And he would always say this, no cost, no excuse. No cost, no excuse. And so uh, how, how, mu how much more now? It's at our fingertips. It's at our fingertips. No excuse. There's no excuse for uh, God's people to be weak and anemic uh, where his word is concerned. Amen. Amen. So... Back to faith school. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about something that, like I said, Landon did actually preach it uh, in, in his message. Something that stood out to me um, in the message on Sunday. And we're just going to let the Lord speak to us. We're going to just marinate in it, right? Um, let's pray and we will we'll get right right into it. Father, we're so grateful to, to be in your house tonight. Uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word uh, is life unto us. And we've come expecting. And Father, you never, ever, ever, ever disappoint. I thank you for words of life, words from heaven. Uh, you said there would be words of heaven that would be declared in this house that would set men free. And so I thank you, Lord, for words from heaven tonight. I thank you for the flow of your life-giving spirit. I thank you for liberty. I thank you for freedom. I thank you that heaviness bows its knee in your presence this evening. I thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So Luke 18, 8. Um, is it okay if I talk about this, the sun? Yeah. So Luke 18, 8. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith in the earth? So that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Will he find faith in my house? Will he find faith in me? Uh, we had team night on Saturday night, and, and all of our team members who were present uh, received a, a very special gift. How many of y'all have it hanging on your wall already? Look at that. Amen. So precious. And you could sense the presence of God uh, during this. Uh, and, and on that sign, I almost brought ours and, and forgot about it, but it says, when the Son of Man returns, he will find faith in the Parker house. Amen. What a declaration. What a declaration to keep before our eyes, uh, to keep in our mouth, and, and to keep in our heart. When the Son of Man returns, and how many of you know he's returning very soon? Very soon. And he will find faith in our house. Amen? Amen. So, um, you know, Landon, he, he said this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I've done the very same thing he has. But boy, there was something in me that switched that faith is about pleasing him. 
Faith is about pleasing him, about being faithful to him. When I'm not in faith, when I'm not coming up under the authority of his word, I'm having an affair on God. I'm not being faithful to God. That illustration that pastor gave, that pierced me. That pierced me. Uh, And I want to be faithful to God. Amen. Amen. I want to be faithful to God and to his word. I don't want to have an illicit love affair with another word besides, besides God's word. Amen. Faithful to God. Faithful to his word. Amen. Without faith, we can't be born again. Faith is pretty important, isn't it? Faith, without faith, we can't be born again. Without faith, we cannot touch or interact with God. Amen. So faith is important. And uh, I'm just going to say one more time, man, if, if, we would, if we would saturate ourselves uh, w- with these eight weeks of messages uh, regarding faith, I- I'm telling you, Our lives would look drastically different by the end of the year. And I'm expecting it. And I'm expecting it. Amen. Amen. So Sunday's message, uh, how many, who can tell me what the title of it was? All the way to the finish. All the way to the finish. Do you know God is very interested in you finishing strong? Amen. Not weak, not depleted, not give. Uh, give out well not gave out not anyway you know not run down uh, not depleted but he wants us his desire is and he's made a way for us to finish strong amen to represent him well when he comes to get his body Uh, he he, we're not to look like an old hag Come on now, he's coming, he's coming for a glorious bride, is that right? And so it's not up to me to make myself glorious, that's his job. Amen, amen, uh, but it does require my partnership with him. Amen, so we know the things of God don't fall on us like ripe cherries from a tree, is that right? God's part is grace, our part is faith, amen. So I'm very excited. I am very excited about the fact that God is a God of increase. Uh, He's not a God of diminish. He's not a God of lessening. I don't expect to grow weaker as I grow older because the Bible says he renews my strength. He satisfies my mouth with good things and he renews my youth like the eagles. Amen. Uh, It's a good thing to come in line with what God says about us. Amen. I'm not expecting to decrease because God's word says he will increase us more and more, us and our children. What word do you have in your mouth regarding you and your children? Do you have a word of increase? Or do you have a word that's been formed by what you see with your natural eyes? Amen. God wants us to finish strong. Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. The author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, something that we pray uh, frequently in, uh, in our prayer time, our prayer group on Tuesday and, and Thursday. <coughs> Excuse me. Thursday mornings is... Uh, Thank you, Lord. We declare this over the people uh, and the families of Beyond Church. Thank you, Lord, uh, that in every person you put a heart of a finisher. That that you have given us the heart of a finisher. All the way to the finish line, strong. All the way to the finish line, strong. Amen. Amen. All of these scriptures are... um, were used on Sunday. Philippians 1 6, he who began a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. That's right, all the way to the very end. The one who began the good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. Amen. 
So, one of the things Pastor talked about on Sunday, ooh, I'm get my notes here. It'll be hard not, not to just uh, preach from these. Uh, one of the notes here says, to get to the finish line, put and keep God's word in my mouth. Amen. Amen. Uh, but another thing that he said was Galatians 5, 7. And this is what we're going to talk about tonight. Galatians 5, 7. You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? You were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Do you remember uh, um, the illustration? I'm not going to do it, but you remember he was running, right? He was running. And, uh, and, he, and he talked about the, the race and being in certain lanes. And, and, you know, sometimes you get just hit from an unexpected place. Causes you to trip up a little bit, right? So I really, I want you to think about that right now. I want you to think about it and I want you to name it. Not out loud. You were running a good race, a good fight of faith. The faith race. You were running a good race. Who or what cut in on you to change your focus? What has interrupted your corresponding action of faith? You ever been there? Running, running your, running your race, you know, walking by faith, living by faith. Uh, you know, things going along pretty well, and then either something, something out of the blue comes in and bumps into you and uh, kind of throws you off your game a little bit, and then sometimes things just kind of sneak up on you, and it's a little by little sort of thing, right? Just a little by little sort of thing. So again, I'm going to say, you were running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth. Obeying the truth. What does that mean? Uh, coming under God's word as final authority in your life. Who or what cut in on you to change your focus? What has interrupted your corresponding action of faith? <clears throat> We as a people on planet earth have the unique ability to live in and to partake of two realms at the same time. Did you know that? Yep. Uh, so because we live in a physical, natural body, we are able to walk around on this planet. You know, it requires a body, a physical body, in order to do that. Is that right? Uh, no physical body, eh -eh, out of here. Right? And we also have the ability uh, as a child of God uh, to walk in and to participate in the eternal realm of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so we know that in the natural realm, we calculate and we reason and we make decisions based on the things we see, based on the things we hear, based on what we experience in this natural realm. Is that right? Yeah. And, uh, and then we make decisions and we calculate things uh, in the spirit realm based on what? On God's word. Is that right? On God's word. Uh, this is, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures here. And by faith. You know, we must have faith to be able to interact with and function in a kingdom that we cannot see. It requires faith. Is that right? What do we need for faith? What do we need for faith? God's Word. We must have God's Word in order to have faith. That's what the Bible says. 
Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we don't want to be deceived in calling something faith that isn't faith. If I don't have a word from God, I do not have faith. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so a reminder here that we are a spirit. We have a soul. And our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we live in a body. Right? We're a three-part being. We are a spirit. God is spirit. Now, spirit doesn't mean a vapor. There are spirit bodies. And my spirit body looks just like my physical body. Your spirit body looks just like your physical body. Only better. You know what I mean. You know. Uh, but we're going to recognize each other in heaven. I, I'm not going to walk up to Landon and Philip and wonder who they are and have to get to know them. We're going to know exactly who they are. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to have to wonder... Who my mom and daddy uh, are or where are they, I'm going to recognize them. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.18. Another scripture. <clears throat> and we're going to read it. Let me hear those pages turning. Turn. Turn. Let me hear those pages turning. I can't rap and, tur and turn in my Bible. Nor can I rap standing still at all. Thank you, whoever said that. I am rhythmically challenged. It's true. When Kyle's not on stage, I try to stand by him if there's any clapping so he can try to help uh, keep me on beat. Yeah. All right. 2 Corinthians 4.18. I'm going to read this. Um, in the King James, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen. You remember all through this faith series and on Sunday, uh, I know Pastor talked about it, but he talked about Romans 4, the, the, the faith chapter there in Romans 4 about Abraham. And you get down there, Romans 4, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and it talks about Abraham considered not. Is that right? He had to consider not something. And the Bible told us what he considered not. And that was what he saw with his physical eyes. If we're going to be a people of faith, we are going to have to be th uh, this people right here. That we do not take into consideration. We do not consider the things uh, that we see with our eyes that we hear with our natural ears. Amen. Amen. It says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are... For the things which are seen are temporal. Say they're temporary. Everything we see with these eyes is temporary. Temporal. Oh, I have note upon note upon note on this page in, in my Bible. Temporary means it's changing, it's moving, it's shifting. Everything that we can see with our natural eyes is changing and moving and shifting. I heard uh, a minister say this many, many years ago, and it just marked me. If there is something in your life that went from good to bad then it can go from bad to good. Amen. Everything in this natural realm is temporary. Glory to God. So we don't look at the temporary. We don't base our lives on the temporary. Because anytime I do that, I'm up one day and down the next. Because it's ever shifting. It's ever shifting. And if that's where my focus is, then I'm ever shifting. I'm ever shifting. That's a lousy way to live. Amen. Amen. So we're not looking at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are 
eternal. Thank you, Lord. So our focus, our focus um, is on the things that are not seen. And if my focus is going to be on what is not seen, then what is required of me? Faith. Faith. I must have faith. I must have faith. And if I'm going to have faith, I have to have a word from God. If I'm going to have faith, I've got to have a word from God. And I'm just telling you, it, we don't have time to patty cake. We don't have time to patty cake and assume that we are walking and living by faith if we are not um, meditating on this right here. If we're, if we're not in here and we're not letting the word dwell in us richly and talk to us and allow God to bring a word to us, we are not in faith. And, and, and there have been times that people have accused uh, God of, this, of, of, of faith not working. No, faith works. Faith in God works. Faith in God works. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. See, that was just one page, and I only have two. That, that's, that's pretty good for Mona. <clears throat> okay, so just going back to this, to this temporal world, who is the God of this world? God, Satan is the little G God of this world for now. Yeah, for now. There's coming a day where he is going to be locked up for all of eternity. Glory, very soon. Glo glory to God. But right now, right now, he is the God of this world. So he can cause all kinds of upheaval. He, he can manipulate and cause all kinds of upheaval in the world. And so it's very important that we as God's people know that although we're in this world... We're not of this world. Our citizenship is not in this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Glory to God. And so, uh, uh, Pastor said this on Sunday. I, I, think it was, I think it was Sunday in my notes. One, one of the last couple of weeks. But talking about kingdom. God's kingdom. Well, a kingdom is where the king's way rules. Right? His, his way is, is the rule. Glory to God. So it's good that we know what, what kingdom we are a part of. And it's our responsibility to be the church that occupies in the earth right now. Uh, and no matter what we think about the fulfilling of prophecy and what is going on and what the Bible says about the end times going to look, look like, hey, we don't lay down to evil. We resist evil while we are here. We're supposed to be occupying and pushing back the powers of darkness. So we don't sit on our blessed assurance and say there's nothing we can do. Uh, this is just, it's just going to play out this way. So, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be. No, we get up, we put on the full armor of God, we stand in the authority of who we are in Christ Jesus, and we push back the darkness. Amen. We resist it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So, we're going to read Matthew 7, 24 through 27. A familiar scripture, but man, I just want us to put our eyes on it. It's so good. Guys, it's so good for our eyes to look at the word. So good for our eyes to land on it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. <clears throat> We're talking about... Uh, the temporal realm and the, the eternal, the spirit realm. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. I'm going to go back up. So everyone who hears what? 
These words of mine, verse 25, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. I know, I know this is a, I know this is a super church story. I know this is a kid's story. Do it with me. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Okay, so we don't want to leave this here. We don't want to leave this as a story. Uh, uh, this matters. This matters what we're building with. This matters what we're coming up under as final authority uh, in our lives. Because the rain and the storms and the waves of life come upon every body. Every single person but it matters what we're building on amen amen verse 26 and everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid man foolish man who built his house upon the sand and the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and great and complete was the fall of it. Amen. Amen. So we want to always, always consider the spiritual realm. This natural realm came out of the spirit realm. Is that right? The, the natural realm came out of the spirit realm. So we can say the spiritual realm, the eternal realm is greater than the natural realm. Can we say that? I mean, what this life here on earth, it's not the end all. It's not the all in all and the end all. There is an eternity. Amen. In a realm that we cannot see yet with our natural eyes. There will be a day coming very soon where our faith will become sight. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so the spirit realm, the spiritual realm is greater. Say the spiritual realm is greater than the natural realm. All right. So let's read. Um, oh, let me back up here. So we want to always be considering the spirit realm. We always want to be uh, considering the eternal realm. And, and of course, part of that is his word. A huge part of that it, it is his word in considering it. I was listening to um, a minister a couple of weeks ago. And he made this comment. No, anybody jump on me or anything about this. Uh, but he said he truly believes that 10% of our health, health in our bodies, 10% of it is due to diet and exercise. That's it. 10% of it. And then he, then he gave this, um, this analogy. <laughs> Ooh, chicken. He talked about the Japanese people. And, and he said, you know, in, in that culture of the, of the Japanese people, it really is a culture of honoring uh, the older generation. The elder generation. Is that true? So much so to the extent that, that they build rooms on and suites on to their house to care for uh, their mother and father, for, for their grandparents. There is a honor and a respect for them. Right. He said, he said some years ago they did a study on the Japanese people and uh, because of their longevity in the earth, because of their longevity, why, why were they living as long as they were? And uh, so the study said it was because they ate so much fish uh, and omega-3 and how good it is for your heart. I'm not bashing that, all right? Um, but anyway, how good it is for their heart. And that's the reason that they have such longevity uh, in their culture. And the minister just made this point. He said, I would beg to differ. He said, throw up Ephesians uh, 6, verse 2 and verse 3. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise... 
that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. We consider, we as God's people should consider God's word. When, when it comes to anything. That, I'm telling you, this is one reason why I hate Google. And I hate the internet, and yes, I use it. Yes, I do. But, but there is a part of me that absolutely hates it because anything goes on in our life and we're Googling it. Do, 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 do. Tell me, tell me, Google, tell me, tell me, Google. And the first place that we should be looking is to the spiritual eternal realm and not to Google. Amen. Amen. Let's read Romans 8, 6. Romans 8, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How many of you enjoy life and peace? Yeah, me too. Life and peace. But to be spiritually minded. So when things arise in my life, not, not even arise, just in, just in every day. Every day. You say, well, you can be so spiritually minded that uh, you're no earthly good. Well, that's b bull. <laughs> that's just bull. That, that's not true. The first place that we not even should go, we should live in the spirit. We should be walking and living in the spirit. But, but so many times, uh, can you attest to this? How many of you jump on a natural reason uh, to try to fix a problem that you have. We should always, we should always take into consideration the greater before the lesser. The lesser came into being because of the greater. And, and so our focus and our attention must be on the greater. Amen. So how can we be spiritually minded? Uh, or keep our attention in the, spirit, in the spirit realm, the eternal realm. How are we to do that? By keeping our attention on God's word. Amen. Amen. John 6, 63, Jesus said, My words are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that gives life. We will not find the spirit on Google. Amen. Unless you're looking up God's word. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. If I'm needing life in any area of my life, whether it be my relationships, uh, uh, what, uh, my, my physical body, if, if it's finances, whatever it is. If I believe this word... Uh, that Jesus says his words are spirit and life and I'm needing some life and it's going to come from that spirit realm, not from this natural realm, then I'm going to do whatever it takes to get his word. And to get not only get his word, but to get his word in my mouth. And come into a line with it and agree with it. You need some life. You, you need some life in some area of your life right now? You need some life? What do you need? You need the Word, Jesus' words that are spirit and that are life. Amen. So many times, again, even God's people, we... we <clears throat> I'm thankful for church. I'm thankful for church because, you know, in the world we get dirty. Isn't that right? We do. We just get dirty. We get the things of the world on us. And uh, this talks about the washing of the water of the word. And I'm so thankful that, that when I come into church on Sunday and Wednesday and whenever, that there's a washing. There's a washing of the word that when I receive it, it cleanses me and it gets the debris off of me of wrong thinking and of wrong believing. Amen. <clears throat> but so many times we are, even as God's people, we are looking in this natural realm. We're looking in the natural uh, for a solution 
uh, to our lives. And how many of you know any, any soulish solution? Do you know what I mean by this? Any soulish... Our soul does not have the capacity to heal our soul. Do you understand that? The only thing soulish help does is gives us mechanisms to cope with. To cope with. So, so, we, so we go somewhere and we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk about a situation. We talk about something that we're needing victory over. We're talking about something that has us in a pit that we need to come up and out and over. Amen. And we think if I can just talk it out, if I can just get the tools to cope with it. God didn't call us to cope. Uh, our help is not to cope. But we think if we just talk it and talk it and talk it, that somehow it's going to relieve the heaviness off of us. And in, in reality, it's driving it farther into us. Amen. The more we talk it, the more it's driving it into us. Every time I talk about my past, I bring it to my present. Every time I talk about my past, I bring it to my present. Amen. Amen. So it's the words of life. My words are spirit and they are life. It's words of life that's going to cause me to overcome any obstacle. Any obstacle in my life. Any obstacle. And it's not just a one-time thing. Can I say that? I, I think sometimes we get disillusioned and say, well, I said it once. And nothing happened. How many of y'all take medicine that the doctor prescribes once? And then you say, well, crap, that didn't work. Medicine don't work. Doctors don't work. We don't do that. But Christians do it all the time with God. Do it all the time with His Word. Let's read Proverbs 4, 20, 22. This is a passage that we, that we read a lot around here. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. Okay, let them not depart from your sight. All right, I've got, I've got a part to play. Is that right? You've got a part to play. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all their flesh. God's words are spirit and they are life. And they are life to those who find them. Amen. Now, it, it talks about a specific people there that they're life to. They're life to those who find them. Amen. We've got to be interested enough to find them. He's not hiding them from us. He's not making it difficult for us at all. But his words are spirit and his words are life. And there is nothing, there is nothing that will energize you every single day than having his word in your mouth and declaring what he says about you, what he says about your family, what he says about your children, uh, your finances, your destiny, your eternity. Nothing like it. Amen. And we have this promise that he's watching over his word to perform it. I'm not the performer. You're not the performer. Amen. But it is our responsibility to find them, to guard them, to see them as precious, the most precious thing. If I want life in my life in any area, then I am going to position myself where those life words are. Amen. And you don't find these everywhere. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to close with this um, passage in Mark 4. We're going to talk about the parable of the sower for just a moment here. And again, I, I want to read what I've quoted several times, Galatians 5, 7. 
you were running um, a good race? Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Who or what cut in on you to change your focus? What has interrupted my corresponding action of faith? So we see here uh, in this passage of the sower sows the word. We're going to start in verse 14. The sower sows the word. The ones along the path are those who have the word sown in their hearts. But when they hear, Satan comes at once uh, and takes away the message which is sown in them. All right, so... So the, the message, the gospel message, the word, the word comes and immediately the enemy comes to snatch the word. How many of you know and realize, just bringing it back up to our remembrance, that uh, Satan was after one thing, the serpent was after one thing uh, in the garden when he uh, deceived Eve? What was he after? He was after the word. He was after God's word, what God said to them did God really say he's got no new tricks? He's after the word. He's after the word. He's after the word. No word, no life. No word, no life. So he's after, he's after the word. All right. Verse 16. And in the same way, the ones sown upon stony ground are those who, when they hear the word, at once they receive it and accept it and welcome it with joy. They ha- and they have no real root in themselves, and so they endure for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, why, why did persecution or trouble arise? Because of the word. Because of the word. How much pressure, how much pressure do I need to put on them to get them to let go of that? How much pressure does it take uh, to, to get them to let go of that word? Because he knows the word defeats him. He knows what the word says. He knows faith in God's word. He knows what God does regarding his word. He knows. But do we know? Verse 18, and the ones sown among the thorns are those who hear the word. Then the cares, say cares, and anxieties, say anxieties, of the world and distractions, say distractions, of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the craving and passionate desire for other things creep in, say creep in. And choke and suffocate the word, and it becomes fruitless. <clears throat> so we know the enemy is after one thing, and that is the word that's been sown in our heart. Is that right? And um, cares. It talked about cares. The cares and anxieties. Anxiety is another word for fear. I mean, let's call it what it is. It's fear. Anxiety is fear, all right? So cares. Now, if, if I'm caring, if, I'm, if I am holding a care in my heart, how, how do I know if I'm caring? If I'm thinking on it. If I'm thinking about it. If I'm thinking about it. If I'm thinking about it, then I'm caring, okay? So what does the Bible tell us we're to do with our cares? Why? Because he cares for us. And, and so if I'm holding on to a care, if I'm thinking about it, then what it is is it's choking out the word that produces faith, right? And faith works in our hearts. Faith doesn't work from up here. Faith works in my heart. And so I have to be aware and be very proficient at casting my care. Amen. At casting the care. Lord, I cast it. And I, I, we all, Erin um, talks about this all the time. She remembers the message that you preached about casting the care. And, and casting. Putting it in your hands and casting. And you know, sometimes uh, the battle can be relentless. You know? Uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't just uh, stay there the first time that we cast it. It's okay. We cast it again. And we cast it again. And if we find ourselves thinking on it, we cast it again. Amen? 
Amen? Because we want the Word to have full play in our heart and not be choked out by the care. Amen. And, uh, and so we cast. And anxieties, uh, the same way. A fear, a fear of whatever. Uh, and then let's talk about distractions for a minute. This is the stuff that creeps in. You know, distractions isn't really something that just comes in, uh, out of nowhere and trips you up, right? Uh, it's, it creeps in. It's sneaky. It's sneaky. And, uh, and sometimes distractions can't even be what we would call sin. Right? I mean, uh, what is it? Hebrews 12, 2. That tells us to lay aside the weights. Is that right? Lay, a, lay aside the weights. So, so sometimes there's distractions uh, that we've allowed uh, to, to creep in. And it just kind of sneaks up on us. And then it starts to snowball. You know in Romans 8, 6 where it talks about... Um, the mind that is set uh, upon the spirit is life and peace. But the life that is, uh, that is set or mindful of the flesh, this natural realm, is death. Is that right? And so you think, okay, well, distractions, things that I'm doing, you know, I'm not really experiencing any death right now. But we keep going with this distraction, and then this distraction becomes a habit, Right? Uh, and again, it, it, it's just little by little sometimes. Uh, but in reality, any time I'm sowing to the flesh, any time I am more mindful of this natural realm than I am of the spirit realm, there is death in operation. And it may be uh, a diminishing of joy, a diminishing, a dying. Do you understand what I'm saying, uh, of peace, uh, of, of direction, but because of distractions. And we don't realize sometimes how distracted we have been until a calamity occurs. Amen. Amen. And, and, so, um, and so we want to be aware. We want to be a people that is aware of the spirit realm, that we're aware of the eternal realm. And this is a place that I have find, found myself in lately. Thank God for repentance. Thank God for the light of his word. Amen. Uh, that, brings a, that brings about change. But, but, but in, in these, in these uh, distractions, and you know that you're distracted when you're more aware of you than you are uh, of others. Gross. When you're, that is Gross. By the way, I mean, you know, when I'm thinking about me, you know, that's gross. When, I, when, I'm thinking, when I'm more aware of this natural realm, I'm more touchy. I'm rude. Uh, love has taken a serious hit. Uh, I'm trying to be better, but my try is ridiculous. Do you know what I'm saying? Because the flesh can't correct flesh. The, the flesh has no power to infuse a change. It, it, it's the word. It's living in, that, in, uh, in the reality of the spirit realm. Amen. Jesus said, my words are spirit and my words are life. So if I want to live and I want to walk according to the spirit, then I must I must give my attention and my focus to his word. Amen. Amen. Well, anyone helped tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Evan, do you have... No? No? Well, stand with me and we'll, we'll pray for just a moment. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to pray, and uh, you know, I'm, I'll pray in tongues some. I'm going to, I'll pray in English some, um, but I want y'all to pray, okay? All right, I'm going to lead us, and and let's just, you know, might possibly take care of some business tonight. Yeah, what do you think? Um, thank you, Lord, and um, yeah, thank you, Lord, Father. We worship you tonight.
Hallelujah. We, we uh, just lift our voice to you right now. We set our attention and our focus upon you. Oh, Jesus, you truly are the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, I thank you for the greatness of your plan. The greatness of your plan for every person and every family under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the greatness of your plan for their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that the good work that you've begun in each one, oh, Father, you're faithful to complete it. You're faithful to bring it to full fruition. Hallelujah. Full completion. And, Father, right now, if there have been things, uh, Lord, in, in my heart that I've been carrying, Lord, weights and cares or anxieties, oh, Father, right now, I put them in my hand. And I lift them to you and I say no more. No more. I repent, Father, uh, of taking the care and the load of being my own provider. Uh, of being uh, <clears throat> the way maker in my life and, 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 and in my family. I repent of that, Lord. And I remove myself from that position and I put you in your rightful place. You are the one who makes a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. You are my provider. You're my source. You're the giver of all life. You're my creator, my redeemer. Hallelujah. I don't exist apart from you. You, you sustain every breath that I have. And, and so, Father, just right now, right now, I cast the care upon you with, with absolute confident knowing that you care for us. That you care for me. Hallelujah. Those places, Lord, where there's been distractions. Where, where I have allowed the things of this world. The activities of this natural realm. To take a place in my life that is above you. Father, thank you for bringing it to light. Thank you for putting up a flashing light to stop me uh, from going over a cliff. I thank you, Father, uh, for light and the revealing of it. And, Father, right now, I repent. I repent. I repent of allowing any distraction to be greater than you. To be greater than, than who you are and, and uh, my, my faithfulness to you. Father, where I've been unfaithful... I ask you to forgive me and I repent of that. Forgive me for the unfaithfulness to you and to your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are our great caretaker. I thank you that you're my great caretaker. And I thank you, Lord, that you, you are watching over your word to perform it. I don't have to have worry. I don't have to have anxiety. But I can trust you fully that you are a God who keeps your word. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you that you're watching over your word to perform it. Therefore, Father, I will give my attention to your life-giving word. I'll give my attention to it. I'll give my whole heart to it. I'll come up under it. I'll obey it. Hallelujah. It will rule and reign supreme in my household. Glory to God. For when you come, when you return, Lord Jesus, you will find faith in my house. You will find faith in this house of believers. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Pray with me in the Spirit. Come on, if you haven't done it in a while, this is a great place to do it, to stir yourself up. Hallelujah. What does this do? This makes us more aware of the spirit realm than of the natural realm. 
we're, we're, we're tapping into that to that spirit. In the labor shakandala basiki, in the labor shiki di amba babalondo basiki di anda labor shiki di anda lamba basiki, in the lambo bomonda daridi asiki. So, Father, I thank you for an infusion of strength in your people tonight, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Glory to God, all the way to the finish line. Don't you believe the lie of the devil? You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You get those words. You get his good word in your mouth. And you declare, I'm strong in the Lord. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you put within us the heart of a finisher. The heart of a finisher, all the way to the finish line in strength. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you agree with that, say amen. 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 Good. All right. Well, we love you, and uh, Pastor Nate is in the Deer Woods. I love it when he goes to the Deer Woods. God talks to him there. Yeah. Uh, And so um, we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.